Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 5th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Monday, Apple took the unusual step to release a single update patch for iOS, iOS 10.3.1, that fixed a vulnerability that may lead to remote code execution on the Wi-Fi chip. Well, uh, today, Google, who found the vulnerability, followed up with an interesting article about how to exploit Broadcom's Wi-Fi stack. Now, this particular article article doesn't refer to iOS or any Apple products, but of course Broadcom's products are used across very different devices that utilize Wi-Fi. Google goes into quite a bit of detail how to exploit these systems on a chip that implement Wi-Fi on modern mobile devices and what the different vulnerabilities are that you may run into. One of the root causes of many of the vulnerabilities being discovered here is that Wi-Fi encodes data in type length value. So you typically have one byte for the type, one byte for the length of the field, and then a value. While this sounds pretty simple and straightforward, uh, this has caused issues, in particular if developers, for example, make certain assumptions as to maximum lengths that may be transmitted. The probably most famous and most discussed issue here with Wi-Fi is the SSID, which is limited in length according to the 802.11 standard. But of course, you may encode much larger values than are proposed in the standard. And to make things worse, also a lot of the protections aren't really implemented on those systems. For example, there's typically no memory protection unit. There are no stack canaries or similar tricks that would prevent simple stack-based buffer overflows, which have been almost, I would say, eliminated, at least the simple case in most modern operating systems, but they still work on these systems on a chip. So great article if you're into exploiting hardware and of course also create if you happen to write code for systems like that so you learn more about how to possibly make your code more secure. Now one real hot topic these days of course is anything related to the cloud and from a security perspective techniques that can be used to access other virtual machines that are running on the same host. Now, one sort of leak here that has been abused in the past is the CPU cache, because the CPU cache may retain data from other processes or other virtual machines using the same CPU. The latest approach here uses uh, this uh, CPU cache in order to transmit uh, messages between virtual machines running on the same host. And of course, uh, that leads to a great covert channel because of course there is no network activity or anything that is commonly being observed. In this particular case, they actually used Amazon's EC2 and they achieved a transfer rates of 34 to 45 kilobytes per second. While this isn't huge, uh, this is not uh, megabytes or anything like that, it's still quite substantial and enough uh, to exfiltrate quite a bit of data. But not just that, they actually were able uh, to create an SSH client and server. So they were able to use these standard protocols calls in order to communicate between different machines running on the same host within Amazon's EC2. In particular, one problem that they were able to get a handle on is that when you're using these virtual machines, you don't know what other virtual machines are using that same CPU. So you have to deal with quite a bit of noise here with your covert channel. And despite the noise, they achieved these kind of bit rates. So this isn't just in a quiet system that only runs these two virtual machines. 
And Tyson is uh, not very well known, but actually a quite widely distributed operating system published by Samsung. Samsung uses it uh, mostly for its smart TVs, also for its watches and for some of its low-end phones, mostly sold in developing countries. Well, a researcher looked at the code of Tyson more closely and found it's, well, pretty bad actually. Lots of use of string copy, which of course invites buffer overflows and the like. He found a total of 40 so far unpatched vulnerabilities. At this point, there is no patch available, also not a lot of details, but it looks like it shouldn't be too hard for anybody to duplicate this work and find at least some of these vulnerabilities. Samsung does offer a bug bounty program and is currently working on fixing the problems discovered by this researcher. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.